mind is just to be as actively present for whatever is up. Well, I keep reflecting back just in listening to you and hearing the uh, the non you know the non uh, linear way that things you know the influences you know how can we know what's important what's not you know in other words that shape the uh, our ability to be present and I keep going back to um, the early impress of the circus and what you described about the bodies and the gift you see this is the kinesthetic thing that that to me is so critical and is not really recognized or becomes hyperathletic or whatever is that you were able to feel when he put the pelvis there that you were able to feel that you see, that's a, that's a real gift. It's not cerebralizing. It's a kinesthetic, it's a kinesthetic impact or impress, let me put it that way, of, uh, that you felt the movement and that the, and, and I hear what you're saying, like when you were talking about the circus, you know, of absorbing the incongruities and the shapes and the, the this and the that and the, the, you know, and we don't know how is that going to manifest itself later on. You know, the trajectory, the 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 choices that are being made behind the scene. That there's this gift, and then you know you manage to meet the yogi guy, or you manage to meet this, or you go into this situation, and you go into the TB thing, and you're defiant. And all these things, you know, are bubbling underground, you know, bringing, you know, the, so the, but the, the, I mean, so again, you know, our abilities are inexplicable. And yet, there's an undercurrent of that capability of recognition. I can feel that. This is important. I can feel this, this giving value. I guess that's what I'm um, feeling is so important about what you brought into the world is the valuing of feeling. Which brings me to something that, uh, I, I don't know if we can have a little diversion here. We were discussing earlier, so we're talking about kinesthetic sensory. We're talking about the current um, uh, concerns around Alzheimer's. I don't know if you read the study now where they're saying even with good exercise, even with good relationship, good food, uh, active sex life, you do crossword puzzles, people are still getting um, Alzheimer's. And so we were having this discussion about sensation. They never mention sensation. Or if they do, and you know, when we're talking about sensation, we're not talking about pain. We're talking about a sensory system, which is part of that kinesthetic capability. You have to be able to sense it, where that seems to be missing. And so we're talking about people who have not had access, either through not being touched or in some way that that sensory system didn't develop. I worry about the, um, the electronics, where we're constantly messaging without sensory capability, where you know all of the electronic input, where there's a, a, a non-capability of that. And so it, it, I want to ask you what, what your thoughts are in relation to the lack of sensory palate, the multifaceted capability of the sensory system, the enteric, the enteric capability, um, the, the, the excessive neocortical dependency when you can't feel. And I'm very interested in what you what you feel about that? First of all, I collapsed three times in front of a computer. And I mm -hmm. was, so I don't use cell phones. I get dizzy. So 
So mm -hmm. I have an electromagnetic sensitivity. Yeah. And I just taught a um, in North Carolina in our infant program. And one of the things that it's a, a, that I'm aware of because I have been seeing children for 50 years is that they're different today, children with difficulties, and that autism was not uh, present that much years ago. If it was very rare that I would see a child with autistic tendencies. Mm -hmm. Or for example, children with Down syndrome, um, they were so uh, peaceful, and now aggression is one of their main uh, challenges. Wow. Um, it used to be if I would see mm. a child who didn't speak for certain reasons, with cerebral palsy, it depends. I mean, there's a level of being able to help. I could help them speak. Those same things don't work anymore. And there are many more children who don't speak. They understand, but they don't speak for different reasons than they used to be. And when I was in Italy, I'm going to say seven, eight years ago, I saw a little girl who wasn't speaking. I went to a center there, and um, the old things worked. Within like half an hour, she was able to go, I asked for a B word, bacio is kiss or something, and mm. she was able to begin to speak. Mm. Um, and I asked uh, the woman, um, Gloria, who brought me, uh, this was a little town, um, do people have a lot of computers and things? And she said, no. Oh, that, that was interesting to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. And then I see women who are pregnant and they have the purse over their shoulder and they have their cell phone right next to their belly. Mm -hmm. um, I see women um, with a newborn or a little infant. They actually have a little pouch, I think. I flipped out. I saw a woman unzip the carrier and she took out her cell phone <laughs> from the um, carrier. Um, there's definitely an overload. And I'm getting better because I can live in a world, I can travel now, mm -hmm. where I couldn't go out of the house for three years, mm -hmm. years ago. Um, that's one side. So I definitely feel there's electromagnetic mm -hmm. problems that our children are showing. Those who are more susceptible are showing. Other children, perhaps, you know, 2050, whatever. I don't know what's going to happen with the adults and what's going to change, but children will, you know, survival of the fittest or whatever you want to call it. There are children who will adjust to it and they'll be fine, and the children who are not adjusting, I'm not sure. I mean, those are the children I see, and I, I love them, and I am also concerned about, about that. And I'm going to, all in terms of Alzheimer's, uh, I saw a woman who um, was living with her daughter because she couldn't live alone anymore and um, mainly sleeping all day, some confusion. I saw her only a few times and she started getting up and being active and all that. It diminished greatly, the Alzheimer's. Uh, by bringing in this intercellular communication within her body, in particular her brain body connection at a cellular level, it was quite extraordinary how she emerged out of so much um, veiling. Okay, what I think is very important is this, that you as a field that when you are in a situation, the person is tuning to your field. In other words, that everything that you have developed is in your demeanor, is in your touch. Is, so, in other words, the, the methods are one thing, but the presence is another. In other words, that, that is the method. That is the method, exactly. So, the uh, and this, again, is one of the reasons that I've wanted to do these series of interviews because I feel that something is getting diluted, washed away, that, and I'm saying, stop. We can't lose certain values. The, what, I, what I'm struck with in your, in your discussion is the, there are different ways of describing this. One of the ways would be the empathic capacity 
that somehow through the uniqueness of your character, you're able to meet a situation with equanimity. You know, it feels like not having an opinion, not seeing that this is terrible, but this is seeing, I mean, you, you said so in so many words, not looking at disadvantage. Well, I'm looking for why this person in a way is born and why they have come to teach me in that moment. Yeah, okay, so there you are. What, 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 if, what is their gift? What is my gift to each other? You know, it's interesting because I, um, a friend of mine works with a young man who has a con uh, congenital disease of um, blind. He was born blind. The disease makes you deaf and psychotic. And I really want to work with him for that very reason. What are we going to learn? What gift am I to receive? And what, what can happen here? Just sensing that. So the, um, if you were to look into the future, my last question to you, if you were to look into the future as an elder, what would be, what would you like to see, what would you like to make sure interesting. I, in some ways, don't look into the future. 